Alright, so in this video I'm going to uh, review some basics about text grids in Prot. So, okay, so suppose I have a sound in Prot that I've loaded and then I want to annotate it with a text grid. So to do that I will click on Annotate and to Text Grid. Prot by default has these various things in here. Let's uh, delete them so we can put in our own things. So first for all tier names what we're going to do is type in, well, the names of all the tiers we want, and we separate them by a space. So suppose now that I want a tier called words, and then F0. Then I hit a space. Here's my second tier called F0. All right. And then let's say that we want to make F0 point tier. So we'll type it again here. Hit OK. Uh, shift and click on sound to select both the text grid and sound together. And we can view and edit. Uh, one quick note, um, at this point our text grid is not saved, so we have not yet saved it. We'll get to that later. All right, uh, so here's our um, waveform and spectrogram, and now we've got our text grid tiers here. So our first tier, words, and it, it's uh, selected because you can see it's yellow and the finger, red finger pointing to it is, is indicating one tier one is selected. If I click in tier two, then the finger points to your tier two and that's currently selected. So, all right, so quick reminder about the difference between an interval tier, which is what words is, and a point tier, which is what F0 is. So, all right, suppose, um, let's say I want to mark, um, uh, let's say I just want to mark the beginning of this fricative as some interval. So I click in the waveform or spectrogram at the time point I want to set down a boundary at, and then interval, um, sorry, tier one is active because of the pointy finger and it's yellow, so I hit enter. Hit enter, and now I've got a boundary there. All right, now suppose instead I have tier two clicked and selected. Now if I click in that uh, time point and hit enter. I also set down something, but you can see it isn't quite a boundary. It's like a single point. Um, so here in the interval tier, um, now I can click in these two different intervals and you can see that the numbers here are changing. So right now it says one of two because I am in the first interval, interval one, and there are two intervals in total, one, two. And now that I've clicked on this one, it says two out of two. Out of two. I'm in interval two of um, a total of two tiers, or uh, a total of two intervals. Um, I can label these intervals. I can click in here and type a label. Um, I can click in that interval and type another label. Um, so same thing, I could click on this point and I could label it something. And um, you can see also the text appears up here. So if you know you're zoomed out a lot, you can and you know the, the there's not enough room for the text. You can still see it up here. Um, all right. So there are a few shortcuts that you should know to make navigating this stuff easier. So one is I've been clicking around to get on things, clicking in the intervals, clicking, you know, on the boundaries or on the point. Um, you can also use keyboard shortcuts, so if you hold down Alt and use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard, you can um, advance or, you know, go backwards left to right between tiers. If I um, press the down key while I have Alt pressed down, I can move down to second tier, press up with Alt down, and so I can go back and forth between these two tiers. Um, I can, let's, let's make also um, another a way to make an interval with both the beginning and the end of the interval at the same time is to select a region like that by clicking and dragging. And then now um, you can see that I uh, have set two boundaries at once. And also the text um, sort of jumps into this new uh, tier I've created as well. So if I wanted to have this tier still be another label, then I'd have to type that here and then I could um, delete the text in here by selecting the text up there and hitting backspace. All right, 
So, but that's one keyboard to shortcut to know. If you want to set down an entire interval and start and stop at the same time, you can click on a region and, and then, you know, set down an interval like that. Um, if you do that on the point tier, um, so let me show you also, here's a shortcut. If I do this and then I want to set down something in a point tier, um, even though the first tier is selected with the pointy finger, I can use um, these commands or shortcuts so to still add the interval or point on tier 2. So it says the command uh, 2 is the keyboard shortcut or control 2 or PC. So let's try that. Okay, I'm going to hit command 2 and notice that for the point tier it only sets down the leftmost um, uh, uh, starting point of that region. So I could label this point one or something. All right, so keyboard shortcuts, right? Using holding down Alt and using the arrow keys. Um, and then another thing is you might want to delete boundaries. So to do that, I can um, select the boundary um, by, I, I know which boundary is selected by if it's red or not. And if it's red, then I mean selected, then I can still holding down Alt, hit backspace and then I can immediately delete it. So I could do this one, this one here. I'm holding down Alt while I do the arrow keys. Oh, let's go down to this point. Now I'm going to hit backspace while I'm holding Alt and it goes away. Um, okay, now let's talk a little bit about um, what you can do in this menu with uh, adding tiers, duplicating tiers, renaming tiers, removing tiers, etc. So let's try that. So now let's start with um, uh, okay, let's start with saying, what if I have, you know, a bunch of text in here and I decided, eh, I want to actually use a different labeling system. And, and I, I want my boundaries to stay there, but just don't like my text in there. So then if that's the case, I make sure that that tier is highlighted. So the pointy finger is on tier one. And then I click on tier and I can go to remove all text from tier. Voila, now it's all gone, but my boundaries are preserved. So that's how you can do that. Um, I could also remove that entire tier if I don't want it anymore. So, well, okay, let's remove the point tier instead, just to show you. So I can click on the point tier. Now it's selected with a pointy finger on two. Go, ahead, go to tier and click on remove entire tier and it goes away. Um, so that's removing um, Oops, removing either all the text or removing the entire tier. Um, another quick thing you can do is rename the tier. So right now I have tier one selected um, and it's called words. Suppose I want to rename the tier and instead of words, let's call it, I don't know, segments or something. Hit okay, you can see now it's changed. So that's renaming a tier um, and uh, yeah, so duplicating a tier, um, let me just first get some labels back in here. So label one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that. Okay, now let's see what happens if I have this tier selected, tier one, and then I click on tier, duplicate tier. Um, then it says, all right, you can have a tier in position two. That means it's second in order, so this is the first tier, tier one, and if I have a tier below tier one, then that's called tier two in terms of its position. Um, and so let's say I wanna duplicate it and let's call it um, English or something. And I can hit okay. And now you can see that the tier has been duplicated in the sense that the boundaries are in the same place and the labels are the same. And then, um, but I have this uh, name that I've given it. So. I sometimes use this if I'm doing a uh, gloss. So suppose that this was the word, um, you know, word for a lion in uh, like Samoan. So Leona, and then I mean like, well, the English word is Le Leona, or well, is lion. Um, so that's sometimes why I might duplicate a tier. Um, this would also be a good time to do tier remove all text from tier because you know I don't want these labels there. So. That's duplicating tiers. What about adding tiers? So I can add an interval tier or I can add a point tier. Let's first add an interval tier. 
And as before, we can specify what position we want it at. It tells us uh, if we pick three, it will be at the bottom. That's because we have tier one, tier three, and then so uh, yeah, tier one, tier two, and then tier three would be at the bottom. Um, let's say we want to have a new tier at the top. So that would be considered position one for the top, and we can call this top tier or something. I hit OK, and now you see we have top tier as a new interval tier in tier one. I can also, let's now do a add point tier. I can also, um, let's say, you know, add a tier uh, between this second tier and the third tier, current third tier, that is. So what I would do is um, I would put position three, so it would come after top tier and segments, but before the English tier. And then English tier would become tier four. So let's call this tier three. And you can see indeed it appeared here. All right, um, I think the last thing I want to tell you is very importantly, you need to save your text grid to save all your hard work. So you go to file, save text grid as text file, and then you can go ahead and save it. Notice it has a file extension text grid.